ISO 27001 Annex A 5.24 Information Security Incident Management Planning and Preparation. Bit of a mouthful. So in this particular clause, I am not an incident management professional. But what you are looking at doing here is putting in incident management into your organization. Let's have a start by reading out what the standard says, then we can look at about how we go about completing it. So incident management, basically the organization should plan and prepare for managing information security incidents by defining, establishing and communicating information security incident management processes, roles and responsibilities. So how would I go about doing this? If I work with an organization, the first thing I look at is do they have an incident management process right now? And if they do, that is absolutely fantastic, right? So what we're looking at doing is we're looking at firstly hooking into existing incident management processes, uh, roles, procedures that an organization may have, right? Because this is a profession in its own right, it's quite a standard process. Many organizations will already have this. They'll have the process about how you raise an incident, how an incident is recorded and analyzed and tracked and then remediated, etc. So the way that I would then go about this is I would work with a high level uh, incident management process, right? I would have a high level incident management process and underneath that, I would have what I call L2 support, level two support. Now, the way that overall incident management works is if it has an L2 support structure, these are teams or sub teams that are brought together for incidents of a particular kind, right? So not everybody needs to be involved in every single incident. So it might be if you're a software development house and it's a code incident, then you bring in the coding team. Or in this case, if it's an information security incident, you're gonna bring in the information security team. So I would have my high level process that exists. I would make sure that it meets the requirements that I'm gonna go through in a moment. And then underneath that, I plug in an L2 information security incident management team. I would allocate the roles and responsibilities to the information security security manager, potentially the data protection manager uh, as a bare minimum. And I would operate the triage uh, on a case by case basis for the information security events as they came along. Reporting back into the main incident management process, which should be responsible for tracking the progress of the incident, communicating back with the customer or the uh, identifier, the requester, and all that good incident management stuff that goes along with it. Option number two is I'm putting incident management and I'm either a startup or I'm early stage and I don't have anything, right? I don't have an incident management process that I can tie into. In that particular case, I would take the incident management process that I have defined and written for you step by step. There are guides and there are blogs on the internet uh, and on the hightable.io website. But that process is part of the ISO 27001 toolkit, the ultimate toolkit for ISO 27001 certification. And in there, I've set out for you a common standard approach to high level incident management with L2 incident management uh, for information security. And that gives you everything, right? That gives you all the planning, gives you preparation, gives the exact process that you need to go through, and it gives you the roles that you need and all you need to do is allocate people to them. So that's super, super high level looking at the approach. But what he's saying here is define, right? So what it means by define is it means, it means document. So we need to document those processes. We need to document those roles. As I say, for information security, bare minimum, information security manager role and the data protection role. So you're going to document those roles and responsibilities and we've seen that very, very many, many, many times. So if I was going to give you guidance on what an incident management process should include, what are the key steps that an incident management process would go through? Uh, again, they're baked into the, the process that you've got. Follow the videos and the training on that. Uh, but if not, let me walk through them now. So the kind of things that we're looking at is evaluation. So first step evaluation, right? The evaluation of incidents, monitoring of incidents, the management of incidents, the coordination of those incidents, the logging of those incidents, the handling of evidence. Handling of evidence, again, it's going to have an annex and it's going to have a blog in its own right, but how you handle evidence in your organization can have severe impacts on not only the remediation of the incident, but if you then move into disciplinary processes, HR processes or legal processes. So be sure to check that video on that, but the handling of evidence. We, the process needs to look at root cause analysis and it needs to look at lessons learned. 
What we're going to have within there is we're going to have the uh, identification and we're going to have the incident reporting. Now you've seen when we went through communication, one of the things that we're going to communicate out to people on a regular basis is how to raise an incident, how to raise a concern. So you will have already implemented that with consideration to whether or not it's an email, uh, an email address, uh, an online form, uh, a telephone number, a combination of all of those, the identification of a person that people can approach, again, a combination of all of those. So we're going to put in our planning. You're going to put in your high level process for incident, manage, uh, incident management. You're going to document it, document your roles, document your processes, document how you do your reporting. You're going to cover off the key steps in incident management uh, and you're going to be absolutely golden. If you have incident management already, if you have incident management already, then you're just going to tweak that and adapt that to understand about where information security can fit in and you're going to give consideration to what I've raised as being the L2 process, the level two process, a sub team that would plug into the overall planning and management. So that was ISO 27001 Annex A 5.24 Information Security Incident Management Planning and Preparation, not a hard one, relying potentially on uh, other industry professionals, but you get the basics in the toolkit and you can watch the videos and tutorials about how you technically step through that and the minutiae of that uh, in your own time. I remain Stuart Barker, I remain the ISO 27001 Ninja, and we continue our journey through ISO 27001 Annex A until the next tutorial. Peace out.